Welcome back to another episode of Breaking Bread. I'm here with Danielle Caminetti. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So excited to be here. I'm glad that we finally made this happen. There was a bunch of scheduling conflicts, and I was really excited to have you on. I mean, who wouldn't want to be on with a cookbook author? Like, Aww, that's like the greatest that's so thing. That's sweet. Your food just has me drooling all the time. <laughs> like, you know, I'm on there. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, I'm doing something wrong with my life. Like, like, you know, because I should be making stuff like this. Like, how, how does and that come? And you can. You can. It's so easy to cook. Do you really think that anyone could uh, cook? I do. I was actually watching Ratatouille last night for, like, the first time. And Love that movie. And that was one of the lines where they said anyone could cook. Anyone can cook. And did you always cook, or how, how did you start? Like, walk me through it. Okay. So, as you know, I'm an attorney by trade, so mm -hmm. I never really studied to be a cook. I don't have any culinary experience formally. Um, I kind of, when COVID hit in March of 2020, uh, I kind of, the expression, you know, from the movies, as you know, is uh, I, I went to the mattresses <laughs> and I, I went to the kitchen and I started cooking because it was survival mode. I went into survival mode and courts were closed. So my livelihood went, was down the drain at that point. And mm -hmm. we were just, my son was home remotely learning for school and I really was using all my talents to kind of just stay distracted and stay focused. And I was just cooking my my family's italian american on both sides mm -hmm. so i grew up with food all around me i mean that's <laughs> that's how we that's how we are it's in our blood so but i never was nobody ever sat down and told, taught me how to cook mm -hmm. so i just started to cook i started to post pictures on social media I started mm -hmm. to recipe develop some of the the things that i made were passed down mm -hmm. from my grandmother and my aunts my mom some of the things were just from being living in New York, I've lived in four of the five boroughs, so I've learned really good food. And, uh, and the rest is history. And I just, I, I took it and I ran with it. And you've been at this since COVID started then, like really like full steam ahead. Yes. That's awesome. Cause the platform that you've built and what I've watched you do in such a short amount of time is fantastic. Like without you telling me anything, I would have thought you would have been at this for years, like years and years and years. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. And it's just, it's, it's the amount of passion that I think right. I have for it. It is, it is definitely something that you need to have the passion for. So when you say anyone can cook. Just a quick espresso break. Thank you. <laughs> oh, this is delicious. Right? This is iced the, espresso. This is the iced espresso. From Fortunato Brothers Bakery. I told you that's what got me hooked. Yeah. Oh, I could, I could drink this all day. Right? All day. 100%. Um, so when you talk about anybody can cook, yes, anybody can cook, but not everybody has the passion mm -hmm. to cook. And I find now with the current generation, I'm probably dating myself, is everybody wants things to be easy. Nobody has passion for it anymore. Like my grandmother, when she was cooking, she was there all day long behind the stove. She, they didn't have anything. They never took shortcuts. They never got the minced garlic that was already minced. They did it themselves. You know, if they didn't grow it, they, they did. They never took shortcuts. So yes, I have the passion to cook and I love to do it. I love to eat. There's really very few things that I don't eat. I could probably count on one hand what I don't eat. What are they? I'm just really curious. Um, probably liver. Like li I don't blame you. It like liver and onions. Like I've distinct. tried it. Yeah. I don't just, one thing is I don't just say I don't like it. I will try anything. Yeah, true. Agreed. And I kind of was brought up that way. So like my parents would threaten us to try like yeah. different <laughs> things. They would threaten us to try mussels or galamad or whatever it was as kids that we didn't want. And they kind of Jedi mind tricked us Jedi. or, you know, bribed <laughs> us. However right. it was for, to get us to try it. $20 here. Right. Uh, my mom would be like, if you don't try, if you don't like, if you like that, you're not getting any more. If you try it, if you don't, if you like it, you're not getting any more. So it was like reverse psychology. Yeah. So we wound up really being very sophisticated eaters. And my son's the same way. He'll, he'll you know, he eats like he's going to the electric chair. <laughs> and I've trained him well and spicy, anything. We, we eat all kinds of foods. So it's not just Italian what I make. It's kind of a little bit of everything. It's a compilation of, you know, there's 70 recipes in here, Greek, Asian, Italian, uh, Indian, I have a little bit, a smattering of a mm. bunch of different recipes, so. That's pretty cool. It's I a, thought it's, it was just Italian. No, I no, no, know that. no, I love all different kinds of food. Mm -hmm. Like I love Greek, I love lamb, I, I love the Middle Eastern food, I love Indian food, I love um, 
Ethiopian food, Thai food, you know, we have a bunch of everything. I live in, in Bayside, there's a big um, Asian, Korean influence, yes, so big time. we have so much of everything all around us, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, so I never was formally trained, and I kind of sell, was self-taught, and just having a lot of time on my hands since COVID hit. What are your aspirations? Like, do you want to have a cooking show one day? Like, how far do you really want to take this? Because I can picture you being the type to have a cooking show. Like, I mean, you know, I, totally I love, thank it. you. I love to teach. I love to teach people how to do things and to cook. Um, but by the same token, I'm still a lawyer. So I'm kind of like wearing two hats. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of in this limbo state as, as lawyers because the courts are still, they're not closed like they were in March of 2020, but they're still very much on pause. So we've moved to a virtual system, which we've never had before. We're doing Zoom conferences and Microsoft Team conferences. So I kind of used it to my advantage being home mm -hmm. because instead of me being court in court every morning, now I'm home. So I'm able to log on to a virtual conference and have my camera off and have, you know, chicken and potatoes in the oven or have like a pizza going in the oven. And it's kind of the best of both worlds right now for me. But it's still very much slow. It's not to capacity what it was before. So maybe I'm at 10% capacity of what I was pre-pandemic. So, you know, it's slowly getting there. But in the five boroughs, the courts are very slow to come back. I think you're the ultimate multitasker. I mean, I, I, that's you. the first time I've ever heard, I got a pizza in the oven <laughs> and I got to go to virtual court. Like, that's hysterical. You know, you're so right because I always say I multitask like an Olympian. I have, between my son, you know, being a single parent, I also do special needs advocacy work. So I advocate for special ed children. So I go to IEP meetings. Mm -hmm. I go to school tours on behalf of the parents. Mm -hmm. So I have that going on too. So it's like a little bit of this and a little bit of that every day, which is nice. It keeps it fun. It keeps it exciting. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely requires uh, a, a very uh, high skill in multitasking. Now, you're, you're probably working from morning till night pretty much. Like, you know, with all of this, like, you know, you've got a kid, everything, like, you're... Wow. My mind's always going. I'm, yeah. My mind is always racing. I'm very much type A. I don't rest. Like, everybody <laughs> says they feel bad for my brain because it's always going. I'm always thinking of the next thing or, you know, I always have, like, a pad by my night table, mm -hmm. write things down. Um, but it's all fun and it all, it's, it's very... It, keeps me going you know mm -hmm. I don't I don't really um, I don't have a lot of downtime but I do value my downtime what do you do during your downtime I always like to ask like authors that are influencers because because you know like people think that we're always having fun and why why let it's fun it's still work right yeah it's still work but like I like to cook in my downtime people mm -hmm. say well you cook all the time but that's what I like to do for me it's cathartic it's therapeutic I really like I get involved in it, you know, I'll have a glass of wine, I'll put on some music, some Sinatra, whatever. Wow. It's really like a multi-sensory experience for me. So it's not like a job, even though the influencing part of it kind of is, because you, you know how it is, you get up every day and there's all forms of social media that you need to post on. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, I do like to cook, I love to go to the beach, I love to travel and spend time with my son and family of course and and just experience everything like all the all the culinary uh establishments like fortunato brothers and <laughs> you know just just experience new york yeah that's um wow so that's the first time that like i like i've ever heard well not the first time but like you know it, it's rare that you have someone that truly loves what they do so much that they even do it during their downtime like that makes any sense it's true yeah. no it is it's a passion is what it is yeah. so like people say well you're a lawyer how do you cook you you know you're a cook how do you lawyer i i can you know, you pe lawyer? people can do both you know everybody likes to judge and put people in a box and you can only do this or you can only do that you can kind of you can do anything you know you can do anything you put your mind to and that you have a passion for so you want to know what it's really funny that you um said that because i'm like a firm believer like i'm italian like you know i'm old school like i'm very old school. much about That's like the only you know, school there is yeah <laughs> exactly but the way that i'm new school is like you know i i don't believe that you have to go to work with like a briefcase every day like you like you know what i mean like how you're saying you don't have to pigeonhole your like self like you it's could so go to true. work with the briefcase like how you're being being a lawyer 
and you could also be like an influencer like there's people could live their lives the way that they want to and it doesn't have to be so uh so rigid yeah exactly yeah. well growing up when i grew up talking about old school my parents said you know okay you know you can be a doctor you could be a lawyer or you could be a nun Pick. And so my sister became a doctor and uh so she's a practicing physician and so I became a lawyer, but it, like, it doesn't mean that I don't have other interests, you mm -hmm. know? And, uh, and I think that's, that's really what it's all about, is just, just light, loving what you do, and you don't have to go to school for a thousand years yeah. to be successful. True. So, you, you know, there are business owners that, that never went to school, right? Highly successful business owners. Mm -hmm. So it's just all about, you know, just be self-taught and just really having the passion for what you want to do and, and taking that to the limit, so. What advice, and I always ask this question to all the people that I have on, uh, what advice would you give to someone who, like, you know, wants to be the next you? Like, you know what I mean? Who wants to take that leap and make that step into writing a cookbook while they have a nine to five or, you know, have a kid? Like, what would you say is some good advice for them? I would, I would definitely tell them to drink their espresso every day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> before they get started. I, I have a lot of energy, naturally have a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really sleep that much, but I would say get your sleep and just map out in your mind what you want to have done and like definitely have it manifest. Mm -hmm. um, because I talk a lot about like the law of attraction and attracting what you want into your life True. and really trying to visualize where you want to be. And it doesn't have to be a long-term goal. It could be a short-term goal. I want to get this recipe done by the end of the week. I want to have um, four posts by next week. Mm -hmm. And start small and then just gradually keep adding to it and definitely learn from people. That's ask questions. Like I, I had a lot of mentors growing up, role models in the kitchen and out of the kitchen in family and friends. Mm -hmm and never have never be too proud to ask for help mm -hmm. and ask for assistance in your field with somebody that you consider to be mm -hmm. successful now your uh, book uh, who published it is it self-published self like baby i did it myself mm -hmm. i um i did it it's it's available on amazon mm -hmm. it's available on my website have you covered in the kitchen.com and i really it took a lot of work for me to do this for me to put it to bed and get it done but i really wanted a hardcover and paperback version, mm -hmm. um, not just an ebook. I wanted something to hold, to have, to mm -hmm. be on somebody's coffee table, to say this is basically what I did over the pandemic, so I have something to show for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm really proud of it. I put my heart and soul into it. So I had a cousin's cousin help me. Uh, he's a graphic designer, so he helped me lay it out. Wizard Design Studio. His name is Joe Catroni. We, it keep, is, we keep it, it in beautiful. the family. Yeah. Thank you. And so we kind of learned from each other because he had never worked with Amazon before either. So there were all these requirements with margins and borders and stuff like that. But it was just sitting down every day and allotting the time to do it. And, and even though I, I had sometimes I didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to, it. It's like, oh, the cookbook. But I really had a lot of discipline and I wanted to just get it done because I figured, okay, by the time I'm done with this, courts will be open. Ha, huh? that was two years ago and it didn't happen yet. So maybe I'll be on cookbook too soon. And who took all the who took all the pictures and whatnot of like the food? Like that's So all I you? did all the pictures of the food mm -hmm. and and staging. I was my own that's food awesome. stylist and everything. The only pictures that were taken professionally were the ones that were taken of me. Yeah. But everything was done by myself. So this was you. That was me. This is unbelievable. Thank you. This looks like like look. Wait till like, you he, taste he's it. He's like a chef and he's <laughs> telling you. This is unbelievable. Like, Thank you. I styled it. I mean, I like, can't even believe like the way that it's edited, like the sugar, even or the salt. The oh, hardest thing people say, what was the ask me? What was the hardest thing Look at for for <laughs> you to do with like what was the hardest thing about writing the cookbook? And it wasn't actually writing down the recipes. It wasn't laying it out. Mm -hmm. It was having the discipline not to take a bite when I'm photographing my food. <laughs> <laughs> so From litigation was... to to salvation, I like that. Thank you. And From litigation to salivation. Oh, geez, I thought I said. So that was my hashtag because. Um... Salivation. I just fucked that up. <laughs> yeah.
it's funny because the other day I was before a judge and he said something like after we were finished with our case he said he called us up and he said are you like cooking or something like that and I said <laughs> actually I wrote a cookbook judge over the pandemic he's like I heard that I heard that so I said I would give you a copy but I, I don't think that it's appropriate mm -hmm. so he asked me and I said also I said no pun intended but I wouldn't want to be currying favor with the judge <laughs> I like that. I like that. That is so funny. So it's funny because clients ask me too when I'm covering court cases. They're like, "Oh, you know, you did such a great job on that on that case the other day, covering that motion for us." But can I have the crab cake recipe? <laughs> so it's like it's it's a crazy mix, but it's really fun. And you know, it's all good. Everybody loves food. Everybody loves to eat. Not everybody loves lawyers, but everybody does love food. In my family, everybody loves lawyers. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> But yeah, no, because my dad always told me growing up, surround yourself with two kinds of people, lawyers and doctors, health and law. He's right. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> Which McCall it. Um, so yeah, no, I'm honestly really <laughs> impressed with all of this. Like, it's just unbelievable for someone to come I appreciate from that. like a self-published uh, background and do all of this. Like, you know, because I, I was also self-published at like one point. So I like know how hard it is. And it's, I can't even imagine a cookbook. So, Thank you. Yeah. I, it was, it did take a lot of discipline and I mean, I do like to write and I do mm -hmm. love to develop recipes, but another difficult part of it was actually writing the recipes down because mm -hmm. as you know, growing up Italian American, nothing's written down, yeah, never. right? It's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a sprinkle of this, and yeah. you might not even make it the same way twice. You might mm -hmm. make it different three times. Yeah. So that was challenging in terms of actually quantifying all the ingredients mm -hmm. and even now when i make something people say why don't you post the recipe because i made it up in my yeah, head yeah. and so then you have to sit down and like methodically write down and list down all your steps so mm -hmm. that that's the challenging part of it but all in all i you know i loved doing it and i'm still going to continue to do it so i went from have you covered my my business is called have you covered llc that's my court business so then now i turn that into have you covered in the kitchen yeah so i trademarked it my dad helped me do the logo which is the scales it's kitchen scales instead of the scales of justice and it has a colander or a scolabasta on one side <laughs> and a frying pan on the other side and it's of course the traditional red white and green we're back after a brief intermission we had uh, some espressos we're live from fortunato brothers bakery the greatest place on earth if you ask me yeah but uh no so we were talking about um what were we talking about i don't know we were talking about so yeah. many different yeah, things yeah i know we, wait so we were talking about publishing getting yes 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 yes, yes. yes doing everything self-publishing self and having the discipline to do it and mm -hmm. the photography and just basically plugging away every day at mm -hmm. the cookbook, which was a feat in and of itself. Now, during the break, you brought something up to me that was very interesting. You were saying how you Don't reveal my age. You were saying, what, 29? I mean, right. We, uh, you were saying how um, the Chinese food, uh, how Chinese food had like an influence on some of your cooking or, yes. your, or your family's cooking. Yes. Okay. I, I think people would love to hear about that. So my, my family, both sides are from Little Italy in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So Mulberry Street, my two grandmothers grew, mm -hmm. lived on Mulberry Street, 56 Mulberry and 78 Mulberry. So my parents, the families knew each other growing mm -hmm. up and it was very, very neighborhood. You mm -hmm. know, everybody knew everybody. And so bordering Little Italy in Manhattan is Chinatown. So my family has a lot of Asian influenced recipes. So I make a killer Peking pork chops. Ooh. I make like a takeout style Chinese spare ribs, good fried Ooh. rice. So growing up we had that and my family, my friends would say, but I thought you were Italian. We are Italian, but because they learn all the Chinese grocery stores, mm -hmm. Mott Street, Mulberry, Bayard, all the great Chinese restaurants, you know, they, they knew them by number, like 16 <laughs> Mott, 18 Mott, you know. I will personally film clips and edit them for you for a whole week if you make me that uh, Chinese <laughs> takeout Oh, the sparrows are, they yeah. are killer. Homemade, so I can't even good. imagine. They're in here. Did you see them in here? No, I, no, I didn't. Okay, I'll show Where, them to yeah. you. They're under entrees. Yeah, I will Main personally courses, add a, a, add Chinatown video for you. Chinatown Spa Takeout Sparrows, page 89, food color, food color. Wow. And this this doesn't even do them justice, but How they really are awesome. They're so good. The sauce alone, you can like just 
put over mm -hmm. rice and just I know. Grenadine. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. I mean, it's just for color. Mm -hmm. The taste is mm -hmm. just amazing. So what's next? Like I, I heard you briefly say cookbook two. Like, you know, like what's next for all of this aside from, you know, um, whatchamacallit, hopefully someone sees this and you got your own show. But. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is all fun. I love to, like I said, I love to teach mm -hmm. people how to cook. I always say I, I disarmed I disarmed the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Many of my friends, professionals, you know, lawyers, accountants, they never had the time to learn how to cook. Mm -hmm. They are afraid of the kitchen. They're afraid of, of doing something wrong. And mm -hmm. I say just, just jump in and just do it. You, you learn by your mistakes. Not everything is beautiful when you do it. If, if it tastes good and you had fun doing it, then that's an accomplishment yeah. in and of itself. So I do like to help people disarm the kitchen the way I did, the way I made the most of the pandemic mm -hmm. without any formal training and I did it. Um, that I love to do. I don't know what's next. I, I love uh, talking to people, meeting new people. Um, so we'll see, the world is my oyster. I love that. So there, there aren't any set plans for a cookbook too? Possibly. This, this one was a lot. I mean, I would love to have a, a publisher to help me, assist me in it, because I anticipate that courts will reopen more fully in the next few months, and then I really won't have a ton of time to dedicate to it mm -hmm. like I did with this one. So if I had a publisher to keep me on track and have an editor, because that the editing was another big part of this. Mm -hmm. um, I self-edited, and I had somebody else help me out with the editing, but that was really... A big chunk of time to do all that so if having a publisher would help out i would welcome it so funny that you say that i actually know a guy ironically i got a guy i got a guy <laughs> no i think he'd be interested in this really uh so for like a cookbook too so i'd be happy to make a couple phone calls for you that would be awesome yeah. thank you 100 percent. no uh i love to pass it forward because there's one thing that i always say is like you know i remember when like, you know, and I still am kind of that guy, but when I needed like a phone call for one thing, like, you know, and people wouldn't do it for me, I, I wouldn't get upset. So I'm always the kind of person to make sure to reach out and you got to make that phone call for like s someone because, you know, you, you right. never know what it's going to lead to for that. It's so true. And, you know, what goes around comes around. You, you help somebody else out. Somebody helps, you know, one hand yeah. washes the other, they say. And so I, I would welcome a cookbook, too, if I had a little bit of assistance with that. And because, as they say in the Bronx tale, mm -hmm. the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. I think that's the perfect way to end the pod. <laughs> I think so, yeah. too. Thank you so much for coming Thank you on. so much for having, having me. This is a pleasure. I Thank can't you. wait to cook from this. <laughs>